Well, before the game against Namibia here in Toulouse and post the game against France in Paris, we identified a number of areas the All Blacks had to work on. So, uh, Mills, did they achieve? I think a lot was achieved last night. I was really impressed with the way uh, they stuck and were disciplined about their, their game plan. It's such a niggly game, Jeff, because um, when you play an opposition that's a little bit unstructured, guys um, that get an opportunity also perhaps sometimes probably push the boundaries a little bit too much and sometimes tend to get a little bit individualistic. Last night we didn't see that um, and everyone seemed to be on the same uh, song sheet. Um, it got a little bit, uh, I suppose, open later on um, once the reserves came on. But I think all in all, th there's a number of, um, you know, questions answered last night, in particular the likes of, you know, Damian McKenzie and his partnership also with Cam Royard. The interesting part for me about this, Mills, is the fact everyone's got an opinion right now. And people will look at this game in different ways. Oh, it was only Namibia, yeah. this was expected, um, the All Blacks should have done this. Uh, no, this was a great performance from the All Blacks. Ultimately, it's a World Cup game where they needed to get some confidence after the disappointment of the week before. And this group went out there and did that. Now, there's clearly some incidents in the game they'd like to be better. They're disciplined once again. They conceded not, not just a yellow. It ended up being a red card. Some of the little things around the game, they'll still be disappointed in Isbo that they weren't able to nail. But some of the big rocks, some of the things they really were targeted f in that game against France, particularly up front, they were dominant at scrum time. It, got, it was early on, wasn't it? You could see that they were going to be <coughs> dominant at scrum, dominant at line-out time. So ultimately, Namibia didn't probably test them as much as they would have liked. So the All Blacks can go away with confidence, but in terms of is it going to help you later in the tournament, not, not convinced. Individuals, um, I think we identified maybe Bowden Barrett was under a wee bit of pressure. How did he come through at all? I thought he went well, well Mills. I think he did everything he could do. I mean, ultimately his decision making was good. When you've got a, an intent to play, which the All Blacks clearly had right from the start, he was able to do the things he does really, really well. His speed, his intent, it was a, it's a run first, uh, kick second mentality and I think that really helped him get some confidence in this game. The interesting thing was that when the change was made, it was Richie Moonga who came to 10, it was Damian McKenzie who went back to fullback. I'm wondering whether or not that's a conversation they might have as we head towards Italy. Yeah, I think exactly that. I think what we're anticipating is that to happen, to give you know, McKenzie the opportunity to perhaps for, to play a big role off the bench, you know, coming on at fullback. I think Bowden played well. I think he'd he done his role, right? You know, he got himself into, um, you know, the outside um, channels. He kicked well when he came into the second receiver role as well. Everyone done their role, role right. And so the hard part will be, what are the coaches going to be looking at when it comes later in the later stages? I mean, you get to the Uruguay, well, even you know, the, the Italy. Are we going to go with guys that's going to possibly bring a little bit more in terms of that positional play? Leicester Fying Anuku. He's now, you know, put massive headaches in terms of the balance of that whole back three, a little bit of power, something a little bit different around the edges to help the forwards. Um, and so, you know, what what does that now look like in terms of, uh, you know, going forward? Will Jordan and Mark Talia, you know, and Bowden Barrett. So there's going to be a lot of talking points and, um, and plenty of headaches for the coaches to look forward to. Man of the match, uh, Cam Roygaard, has he done enough, do you think, uh, now to be regarded as the number two halfback, Jeff? You'd like to think so on the back of the difference that he brings to the game. In terms of his running game, it was interesting talking to him afterwards. He wasn't, he wasn't ecstatic because I think he felt himself that he knows there'll be bigger challenges down the way. I think he was really happy with the fact the platform gave him an opportunity to do what he does well. He ran and his strength is his running game. Um, his ability to offload looked really, really good. I think in terms of delivering a performance which says, you know what, I probably do deserve another opportunity. Please give me that chance against Italy. Mills, I think he did everything he possibly could. Really, really solid once again. What I was really impressed about Cam Roygaard's performance is he actually cleared it. You know, I know we got a nice platform, but he, he cleared the deck majority of the time. And when he had you know, opportunities to run, he made really good decisions. And um, you, you don't often see that at a guy that's only playing his what, the third test match, right? So um, really impressed with the way he just delivered the ball and his passing ability was outstanding. Just to finish, the elephant in the room, the red card. Was it a red card? Oh, look, according to the <laughs> TMO and the referees, it was a red card. The challenge now is that um, Ethan De Groot and the New Zealand uh, rugby and, and this team are going to have to defend him. And what we've seen already is the fact that there are some collisions, some inconsistencies around what's happening in game. This has led to the fact that he's now going to go through the judicial process and they're going to have to find a way... <laughs> to navigate their way around it. And I don't see that happening. I think once you get there, and they've made it pretty clear, Mills, that they're going to take action. 
Yeah, it's pretty tough, isn't it? I mean, even, even the English, oh, man, it's a, you know, got three weeks for that. I, I, I didn't, I thought he'd, the red card was warrant was obviously more than it would be, but that that frightens me a little bit because when you're going up against a judicial like that, you know, they're hammering nice, nice and early head contact. Um, you know, I, I think having you know the, the England result and what's happened there. I think he's going. To, he might possibly get a couple of weeks. I will just make one last point, Nisbo. I think for the All Blacks, it was important that the 20-minute water break was gone. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. important for them. I think that's an area they believe they have an advantage is their conditioning, their fitness, and their depth. And I think they were really happy with the fact that's now no no longer probably going to be part of this tournament as the weather started to cool. Yep. All right. Okay. So that's a wrap from uh, Toulouse, and of course the All Blacks have next weekend off, and they prepare for the game against. Italy.